Hello and welcome to episode 90. 90 episodes 90 of episodes. friendship and joy and love and smiling and Andrew and Catherine we we did it. We got to episode 90. We did it. I just said 90 episodes of learning and patience <laughs> and growing and more patience and, and being spoken over and interruption <laughs> and kindness and rising above and growing and learning and patience yeah we did it and survival did i say survival survived it. but look look if you're new here this is episode one for you, I guess. Yeah, oh my so like, gosh. Oh my Welcome. God, I'm Helen Bauer. I'm, I'm a comedian. And I'm Catherine Vohart, and I'm a stand-up comedian. And, and this we're is friends. Andrew White, who's our producer, who's also a... Hello, a comedian. A Hi. comedian, hey. And this is Trusty Hogs, an episode, uh, episodic series of podcasts where we... I know, isn't that exciting? Episodic. Where we tell you about our lives. Look, they're, they're hit and miss. And then we try to solve your problems, our sweet listeners. Mm-hmm. And in between mm-hmm. that, we have a celebrity comedian guest guest every week yeah and look occasionally we get our futures read by psychics occasionally it descends into madness but that's not to say that it's not just a good podcast for fun and learning like all the other podcasts and it counts too and okay. we're really proud of it I'm welcome tired. to trusty hogs let's get into it yeah through the fog step forth the trusty hogs yeah you're gonna give them your problems and they will solve them or maybe they your problem they'll have guests and andrew white on the tech oh it's helen and catherine as the trusty hogs trust the trusty hogs or maybe not what's happening what? right now is it the heat or no. is it just like because you Can are I like tell you what it is <sighs> okay Look. It's, yeah, the heat's getting to me, sure. But also, Andrew, yesterday, I went to Helen's house for the day. I loved it. I lived like Helen for a day. Mm. And what I've realized is I... I'm doing life wrong. I feel like those girls in Booksmart when they find out everyone's having fun. Because two things... I make my own ice lollies from Two scratch. things happened. One, yeah. one, I saw how she lives and it's feral. And two... We'll if get- you're talking about the bathroom... No, I was worried I, when you went for a way. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of hair in there that belongs that on a man. definitely snails. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's not mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, what I mean is like, you seem to just like sit in your garden, drink ice lollies, send snail out for ice creams, watch telly during the day. You have just built water down yourself. Yet that's happening as I describe your life as feral. <laughs> and then simultaneously, she tells me about how much money she's actually saved. She's lying. She is saving. She yeah. showed me her accounts mm-hmm. because I'm very invasive. Um, <laughs> yeah, Catherine was like, have you done your tax? for this year it's like I thought we were hanging out just in friendship she's like have you filed I was like I am gonna want to see your tax filing and I had to show her my emails with my accountant to prove I was doing it yeah well listen I wanted to analyze how your career is going based on last year really with well you. really well really well but the point is this to see somebody succeed um professionally and in <laughs> um and financially whilst also living like a child who gets taken care of I was very <laughs> resentful so I think I've woken up this morning being like why do I have to take care of my Myself. why can't I be four you but can be four I can't because then who would plan things for us babe and woo I don't think he has time and woo I don't have time and he doesn't woo. have time oh, no. he doesn't have time he doesn't okay have time. well I'll help out then Will you? <laughs> no. Because I because also I brought Hello Fresh to Helen. Catherine was like, coming around to chill out and have a fun time. She brought lunch that she would make for both of us. <laughs> and like, what am I gonna do? Argue for you not to do it? Well, what was quite funny is I was like, let me give you a little job, and you were like, What? No, I thought you were making lunch for me. I don't wanna help. I was like, it's your house. Babe, it's your house. And I was like, she's a mastermind at getting shit done for her. Like Sunil came in after you'd eaten all of his ice creams. That he- was an accident last week. That was an accident what do you mean an accident i was on my period and he had three almond um magnum m s like not magnums but m s style things in the freezer uh-huh. and i went on my period can i have some chucky and he went yes and then i was sad the next day so i was like can i have another one hate that you interrupted that story and yet again have to burp, burp. yeah that's happened i'm wow. sorry i've got a bit of gas and i'm like a baby I need to be burped and then and then the third yeah. one he was out and i was alone and um i find it physically hard to be in a space with access to ice cream that i can't eat 
Mm-hmm. It's um, I tried to argue with him that I wasn't stealing it from him. It's a mental health issue of compulsive overeating. But because we had a fight about a novelty size cookie that got delivered to us, it was quite difficult. That that fight had happened previously. Why did I have to wi- have to witness it again? Then? Yeah, it's happened about four times. I had to call my agent what, up. What happened? Oh. Helen's Anna fucking Grant happened. Anna Grant happened. Now, if anyone's new here, Anna Grant is one of my lovely school friends. We all love Anna Grant. Hi, Anna Grant. We know Hi, you're Anna listening. Grant. Hi, Anna Grant. <laughs> Anna Grant listened to Sunil's podcast about crypto. Yeah. The, the Radio it's 4 really show. It's really good. It's really good. It's really good. good. Because she was researching for a job interview that she was doing, which she got. Yay, Hi, Anna bye, Grant. Anna we love Grant. to see a girl boss winning. Okay. Yes. And because listening to that was like a bit of research for it, she then decided to mail to my flat with Sunil Patel. His flat as well. uh, His flat as well. A novelty cookie. Yeah. Like huge, huge. Yeah. Saying like, congrats on the show. Here's to series two. Hashtag crypto break. Something like that. Okay. Yeah. And could have been for anyone. Could have been. Could have been for anyone. <laughs> and there was a little pack for hot chocolate in it as well. So I immediately, me and Snail send her a video saying, "Oh my god, thank you so much." And yeah. then she responds, being like, "It's not for you. It's not for Helen. I've included a hot chocolate so you don't feel left out." Which I decided to not tell Snail about that message because it feels like not to. to the cookie wouldn't, would not have existed if it wasn't for me because I'm the reason they know each other. Well, no, because she could have listened to it on the, I'm on the, the radio. Reason, yeah, but then she wouldn't have, like, you don't listen to a radio show and send a novelty cookie to someone you don't know, right? Okay? So um, the cookie only exists because I exist. So you're taking commission. So I thought it was a 50-50 situation. My agent then rang while me and Sunil were in this fight uh-huh. and argued that it was more 70-30. For you? 30 for me, 70 for Sunil. Okay, I was like, that's an amazing agent if your agent was like, we're taking 70% of the cookie. Sunil went to the toilet and somehow, I don't know how it happened. <laughs> Helen. There was a knife in my hand. Helen. <laughs> it what was flavor open. Cho- what flavor cookie Like double chocolate. Oh, like yum. it was insane, yum. right? And I was just, it was slicing. I don't even know what happened. I, uh, to quote um, Cell Block Tango, um, I just woke up before I knew where there was blood all over my hands. I didn't uh-huh. know what I was doing until I was washing the blood off my hands. <laughs> how much of it, hang on, how much of his cookie did you eat? I'd say it probably ended up 50-50. He locked it in his room. I genuinely couldn't live with you. Yeah, no, I wouldn't want to live with you Weirdly, I had the most relaxing time at yours because yeah, you lovely, have to give it? in to it. You have yeah. to. As soon as I got there, I was sweating so much. You put um, on my Ursula nighty. I put on your Ursula nighty. And honestly, the second I slipped into that cotton sort of cum-stained, bally <laughs> nightdress, yeah. I thought... I don't have to care about things anymore. It doesn't matter. You're at Helen's now. I was at Helen's house. I ate oh, do you feel like we're in Friends? You know when um, Rachel and Phoebe have to like move in with either Monica or Joey? Yeah. And they're like, uh, Joey's, and it's, it drops all the food on the floor. And it's like, you can leave it. You're at Joey's now. That's what I was like. <laughs> it's honestly, I had M&M's while I cooked lunch. <laughs> I had an ice cream for dessert. I had an ice lolly and coffee all at the same That's time. That's how I knew you were getting into the spirit of things. Because you were cooking lunch and being like, oh, look at the treat bowl. And your hand was in the yeah. M&M's and I just turned around and I was like she's in it she's I in it I was in it isn't it, it so I nice in, I will say this okay there's one thing at Helen's house I don't like Ooh, oh no and I let it slide because I thought ultimately I can do this alone again at home what did I do wrong Helen yeah and Sunil I'd say what have we done have a home habit that I would not allow in my home and it's not what you think Andrew. I can't think what it is. We put on I Kissed a Boy, BBC iPlayer. You're welcome. It's a queer dating show about boys. And the next one's going to be I Kissed a Girl. And it's hosted by Danny Minogue. And we were having a fabulous time. It but guess brilliant. what Helen does, Andrew? Talks through the whole thing. She talks over the fucking television. You talk through a quality reality Are television experience. Are you fucking joking me? I was, I was talking to you as my guest. I was trying desperately. I was making you feel welcome. Was, Are you fucking mental? I, you were talking to Sunil for a lot of it. You were talking over all the important parts. You were talking over the intros to the cast. I'm trying to get to know them. I am, what, by the way, desperately trying to pause as we go. Trying to pause as we go. you were pausing as yeah, we go. Yeah, but I couldn't keep up like with the number. five things. Yeah, because you kept talking. You didn't get How the hint. How do you rewind it? We're watching. It's it's where keep up. It's not my fault that I'm smarter and better educated, so I can follow reality TV better. Name all the couples. Is there a Hugo? There's no Hugo. Okay, there's no Hugo. Gareth. Yeah. Okay. Um, Paired with. Troy. No. 
Um, He's not and a Andrew? Nope. Yeah, there's a Ross. There's a Ross. Yes, there's a ginger. There's Ross. a Ross. <laughs> there's a little ginger called Ross who I'm very nervous for because he's going to get a melanoma. That's the main one I remember. <laughs> Who's he paired with? It does, well, paired with the sun and freckles. Who's he paired with? He's paired with someone. Who's he paired Is with? Is he paired with Joseph? No. Who's paired with Joseph? He now? is paired with Joseph. Well done. Okay. Yes. Well done. You got one right. <laughs> you got one. Name them. Name right. them. Name them. No, this, this, point, is, this is not good podcasting. A oh, niche. sorry, 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 yeah. sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm this just, is just fighting. This is just two women. Should we do a compliment circle? Yes. Come on. Can I just compliment say circle. number one? Thank you for coming around my flat. Thank you for making yourself. Um, relax and be happy. Thank you for having my ice lolly and for enjoying um, a nice relaxing time. And thank you for being so beautiful and talented. You was kind, you was smart, you was important. That was nice. It felt a little derivative, but I appreciate it nonetheless. You're welcome. Thank you for making such lovely ice lollies from orange juice. I freeze them myself. Very it's impressive. Like sun lolly. We don't freeze them. You do, you do, you do. Great Very good. That. All right. Thank you. Shall I carry on? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, thank you for having coffee ready to go, even though it was instant. You're welcome. Thank you for constantly topping up my iced water. You're very I liked welcome. being served water in a stein. I'd never do it myself. Very novel. Stein of water. It, it's a liter. It just helps. Thank you for letting me cook my own food in your house. You're very welcome. Um, I actually did enjoy that. because And I provided extra salad. Extra cucumber. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Oh, and I guess and the Dishoom broccoli and number. Dijon very broccoli nice. Salad. I actually loved that. I'm actually very hungry now. Can you tell? Mm -hmm. um, and thank you for making Sunil, pressuring Sunil into getting us Magnums, even though he didn't want pressuring. to. pressuring. I feel like I just asked very casually. Thank you for screaming at Sunil until he got his ice creams, because otherwise you said you were going to cry. He was out. And I think when a housemate leaves... They should they return with that treaty, which is something me and Sunil do. Something Emma Black did as well. You, yeah. you come home with treaty for the yeah. other person. Because otherwise you'll kick off. And then yeah. Well, I like treaty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's very warm outside. Yeah, and thank you for letting me wear your um, Ursula top. Thank you for wearing my Ursula top. You got to see my little butt. <laughs> yeah, well, I like it's a yeah. really good butt. Thanks, I got a nice butt. And um, and lastly, uh, thank you for letting me, introducing me to the show um, and, and letting me enjoy Danny Minogue for the moments that you were quiet. Wow, let's break. All right. Okay. Was do you feel better? No, I feel I feel fine. Thank you for being such a lovely host. I there have to drink at all times. You're actually a very also, relaxing vibe. I find it very, like, if I want to watch something, I will watch it by myself. This is why I watched Avatar: The Way of Water alone on Sunday. That is too long a film for yeah, you. Yeah, it's a long. There's no you way you it? watch that in one sitting. I there did. is no way. Okay, three sittings. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Also, can I say this about you as a host? Go for it. Attentive. I really, I really pre very attentive to my hydration needs, but also may I say, very good of you that like I got there. We were meant to be candle making, and I just was having the loveliest time. You put up the umbrella for me in the garden, so I was in the shade on my picnic table, and I was so relaxed that I was like really nervous to say it because I, I know that you don't like plans changing, and I also know that you like to do what you want to do. I don't like plans changing. Well, I know I don't like plans okay. changing, <laughs> <laughs> but I was nervous to be like, oh God, she's inviting me for candle making. What if I said I don't really want to? I did I just not want, want to candle make. And then it turned out to be such a relief. Because it, it was so, nice. so hot. To it candle make, you have to have warm. the hob on with like oh. flames all around no, you. No, I was like, like this is no hell. fucking way. We had a gorgeous time. And didn't I make us a nice lunch? You made us such a good lunch. It was really lovely. We Halloumi had kebabs. Yeah, hey, I realise now that um we, I, they were just halloumi skewers, but I thought I'd take a bab and then she'd eat the vegetables on it too. And she did, it worked. You fucking <laughs> tricksy bitch. <laughs> Honestly, my favourite thing at the moment is making my own ice lollies. I truly believe it. You're it. so good. It's, You're a gift. You have so a gift. Fun. You have a gift. And it's Helen. so hard to do because you have to pour the orange juice in and then freeze it and wait. I have news to tell you. <laughs> I have news to tell you. What did you do now? Well, You're did... moving in with me. No, can you breathe? No, okay. <laughs> you know that I bought a car. I know, because we're going on a road trip. Well, I need to tell you something about that. We are going on a road trip, but I just want to flag to you. Oh, no, what did you do? Well, no, I just want to flag to you that I'm quite nervous as a driver. That's fine. I'm quite a nervous driver. Mm -hmm. Like, um, so I went to pick it up, and Adele Cliff very kindly came with me Nothing and was Adele. such a gentle support. She was so calm, even though I was making so many mistakes. You're she was asking like, me to sit in the back seat, aren't you? I think you might have to. And also, um, I've, I've been before. practicing picking up Ellen from work and driving her to work. And she says that I'm the only woman who could get a car and make it look uncool immediately because I sit so close to the steering wheel. But it's just because I have short legs. And she also says that I look very stressed, and I am quite stressed. And I guess I drive with my shoulders like up about 
stamp but my ears and very close to the wheel so I'm a bit of a granny you, with it you drive like the Simpsons the stand Hans up Holden. Like, yeah Hans Holden. that's me but I genuinely am so frightened and um and I'm I doing my it. best I I hope I don't know if anybody Andrew you drive um what when you first started driving and suddenly there was nobody else there to like grab the wheel if there was an emergency did you feel frightened for the first few times? Because honestly, there's like a screaming in my ears yeah. the first few times I've driven on. I'm hoping it'll go away. Does it get better? Uh, it definitely gets better. I, I, don't, I don't remember too much of my early days of driving. But yeah, the confidence and sort of ease you feel at the wheel definitely grows. Okay. I think it's also getting new, like used to a new vehicle as well. Like surely, oh, like... So my, my other car, well, the, the driving instructor's yeah. car, didn't have a handbrake. It just had a button. Oh. So I keep... Forget- so I pulled out... Oh, Jesus. I pulled out into a line of traffic fine there was plenty of time yeah. but my car wouldn't move and then suddenly there was a line behind me and there were fucking people and I couldn't I was like is it the gears am I in gear yes am I using the clutch yes handbrake fucking handbrake was on sweet but Jesus that will come with the rest of it it was honestly so terrifying but I want you to know I've like obviously as a comedian you do get in cars with a lot of different people who mm. have like a lot of different confidence levels mm. and like I've got close friends who are very like they're confident drivers but hate driving in London mm-hmm. and we do just like no radio no music yeah. and it's just like slow instructions if you take a wrong turn okay, fine. leave yourself with plenty of time because I would be fucking terrified okay that actually makes me feel better maybe you can sit in the front mainly because I um when well, you Ellie Salter drive. first passed her driving test we went down a slip road on the motorway the wrong way. <laughs> Shout out to Eleanor Sinead Salter. Um, you're thriving in every other way, but my God, I was nervous getting in that car in Salzburg with you because of that. Oh Doesn't my that God. reassure you? It kind of does. I will say this. <laughs> I will say this. I Getting on, knowing my lane and getting on the motorway mm-hmm. is really scary. It's still really scary. scary. The other day I was driving in Regent's Park because I dropped Ellen to work yeah, for yeah, rehearsal yeah. there. And it occurred to me that I got to a traffic light, but the I'd never had this before. The um, cyclist lane is continuous. So I was like, I don't know what to do here. I don't know what to do now. I go what do you mean? What do you mean? Like, so, like okay, the cyclists so, were still crossing. So you st- you have to turn left, uh-huh. but they have right of way. They're, they're going straight ahead. Oh, so you have to wait. But I've never been there. But you do. You have to yield to them. But I, and like now, when I Googled it afterwards, it's like, obviously you yield to them. Obviously the car should stop and wait till the bikes are gone. But I was like, am I supposed, I didn't want to be holding up the traffic behind me. Yeah, so I was like, yeah, am yeah. I supposed to go? And I'm like, thank God I didn't go. Like the rationale goes completely from my brain when I'm behind the wheel. And I'm like, I guess I just drive, but you don't just drive. You yield to the cyclist it makes a lot of sense i yield to everyone as a passenger full stop yeah like i think even like as a walking person like sunil and me so we like we walk to this like pub near us a lot a lot yeah and we have to cross like two major roads to it and he just goes and Mm, i am like mm, mm. checking like Mm, no mm, one's mm, business mm, i mm. i cannot understand it takes one step yeah. People, I'm monster. really scared. I need. I'm hoping the fear will go away. Please write in if you were a nervous first time driver and you've gotten do. better because I could hugely use the support. But if you want me in the back of the road trip, no, while we I get actually out of feel London, having spoken to you like you'll be fine. Ellen and um, Adele had the same vibe. I think the other thing is it's not just a new car. It's that at the minute, because I have no sense of direction. Yeah. Everywhere I'm driving is a discovery. I'm like, yeah. oh my God, this road is all new. And Ellen's like, we've driven this four times now. But I'm like, this is wild. What, there's a roundabout here? She's like, yeah, it stays in the same place every day. Like, so it, for me, every road feels like a new experience. And it is a lot of the time, they're my first time driving anywhere of these places because I've only ever driven basically the same routes for yeah. my driving lesson. Oh God, I, Andrew, can I wish ki- you'd tell me Can we hear about relaxing. how you're keeping your car? Because obviously you were a bit oh. nasty to Andrew a year ago when you Well, no, my car's obviously cleaner than Andrew's. But that's because I, I I wrote a list in advance for a month. I kept a list of things that I thought I'd want in the glove compartment. And then if I thought of anything, I added to it. So currently my glove compartment has sun cream, hand wipes, chewing gum, hairbrush. Um, How big is it? So I have a lot of these things in my glove box as well. Okay. I was, in my defense about the cleanliness thing, I was like, I've got a very clean car rubbish for, bags. A, for a comedian. You do. But I forgot that I was talking to Catherine. Yeah. So yeah. my apologies. Yeah. I've got rubbish bags, chewing gum, Hanson. Um, I've got uh, a cloth for the display y- screen. I've got my connector for my USB c- charger. I've got all those things. And listen, the thing is, right? I And I've got a scent, obviously. Coconut. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> Why are you laughing at that? Coconut. <laughs> Why is that? Funny? It's just a coconut fan. <laughs> coconut. Coconut. Everyone coconut. get the coconut. Well, coconut. I thought people would be wondering what your I car like smell of. I like coconut. It's coconut. a nice scent. It's a nice scent. But can I say I have to leave my car on the on the street, oh, and the no. street I have to leave it on is. Look, it's one is it makes it's a bit dodge. Okay. And two, I can't park in a tight space, obviously, because I'm like a female driver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Speaking of speaking of, I went to park the car the first time on this road. Adele was in the passenger seat beside me. Yeah. She's been driving for fourteen years. Yeah. I, I was like, pl- I was fine. I hadn't even started to park. Literally hadn't started to park. But a white van came down the road, so I was like, all right, let him pass. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, let him pass. He pa- passes, but then parks up on the other <gasps> side of the road, gets out of his car and knocks on the window. And I was like, he was like, open the window, open the window. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, I want to teach you how to park. I was like, oh my fucking God. Are I, you serious? I said, no, thank you. And he was like, I want to show you how to do it. I was like, I'm fine. And he was like, I'll just show you how to park. And I was like, that's what she's for. And I just closed the window. But the idea that I was like, you don't even know. I don't have P signs on my car. Really? Like, there's there's no re- nothing to tell you. I hadn't, tr- I hadn't started the maneuver and then failed. He was just like, woman stuck there. It was like a parody Please of tell male me you immediately drivers. crashed into five cars. <laughs> <laughs> no, I parked it in a few attempts. Uh, but, but my point is this. Because there's only the one road I'm allowed to park on. Yeah. I have to park. <laughs> at the least desirable po- point which is obviously like the furthest point down the road yeah. so I park and then we walk basically as long as it takes to get to a tube <laughs> back to my <laughs> well the good news is if you ever get a parking ticket you know that Andrew's got you covered yes Andrew <laughs> yes I bet you're gagging to go back to court oh absolutely cannot wait yeah. cannot wait oh my god yeah. well, me so that's Neil what's going on with me tax again, so let us know not my area of expertise you're on your own sorry <sighs> okay. well it's something to think about isn't it yeah, yeah should we have yeah. our wonderful guest yeah, I think that's probably for the best. But I think we're going to have a wonderful road trip. I don't want you to be nervous with me in the car. Okay. And also, if I am a bit jumpy, then you can just pop me in the back. Okay, great. Okay. This great. is the nicest introduction to a guest we've ever had. Normally, it's just you like... You slut, fat bitch! <laughs> oh, sorry! <laughs> hey, that's me. There's our traditional nosedive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We'll say something nice. Um, Andrew and Catherine, you light up my life like nobody Please else. welcome to the, the podcast, the one, the only, <laughs> Jesse K. It's Catherine. I'm going to the Edinburgh Fringe. I'll be there from the 2nd to the 9th at Monkey Barrel at 12 o'clock. I'd love to see you. I am also recording, though, my own radio show in two parts, but it'll all be recorded in one go at the BBC tent. There will be tickets very soon available on the BBC website. Please keep an eye on that because what I would desperately love is for people who actually like my comedy to be in the room. It's a big room, but the tickets will go fast because they're free. So it's between, I think we're recording from four to seven. I could be wrong about that, but double check on the BBC website website on the 9th in Edinburgh and I would genuinely love to have you there so please I'll put out the link when it comes up but put the dates in your diary um, and I'll see you at the Edinburgh Fringe and after the Edinburgh Fringe I'll be doing two nights of my work in progress at Soho Theatre so if you're not coming to the Fringe on the 22nd and 23rd I'll be in London London's Soho Theatre and I'd love to see you there what's up hogs um it's helen bauer here just to let you know i am going on tour this year it's starting in edinburgh i'll be there from the 14th to the 27th and then i'm heading up europe i'm heading up paris harleem Copenhagen, the places you've been begging for me to go. And then all around the UK, apart from Wales. For some reason, I don't have a Welsh date yet. So please, if you're in Wales and you have a venue, just let me know and I'll just come there. We'll have a bit of fun. Um, the, All the tickets are available on my website and I'd love to see you there. And please bring Helen gifties. Thank you so much. Goodbye. <laughs> I feel like I'm cheating on my sister doing a podcast. Just, you actually so are. Weird. Baby are we Weird recording? is in the room next door <laughs> no. crying right yeah, now. Yeah, she is. No, she's. And, and actually, we we decided we could only have one of you. We'll never even look at her again. Oh um, god. Yeah. But that's. Yeah. Do you feel like when you do a podcast without me now? Do you feel like you're doing a bit and the other person isn't doing the bit back? No, I, I don't think of you as a sister. Oh my yeah. god. Welcome, Jesse Gabe. Welcome. Yeah. You must feel weird. You you must no, feel we do weird. Yeah. I did a podcast yeah. at the weekend and they were like asking about like 
like moments that I felt like deep shame. And like basically I had an incident recently where I woke up in a corridor pissing myself naked mm. and like, I'm fine now. Um, I but love like, that you just nodded like, yeah, that seems right. Yeah, yeah. It's like, <laughs> I'm okay. You know the hotel, the new town in Sydney. Oh, it's such a yeah. nice hotel. Well, not anymore. <laughs> no, no, I had a bad time actually. Did yeah. you eat onto the plants? Not, no, not, on the, not in the circular corridor, on the fire escape oh, on right, the side okay. that opens onto the street, that side. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, right. Busy road, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> We're all having fun. And, um, <laughs> and they were asking me, I was like, oh, well, I can't say that because I've already said it on a podcast. And then I was like, I'm um, trying to sort of like vaguely tell it. So I was like, oh, I've already said it on my podcast. But they were like, no, we really want to hear about it. And I was telling them and they were just like, oh, right. <laughs> and just disgusted. Why? Instead of being like you, who's like, you fucking disgusting <laughs> whore. You pissed up bitch. Like, I, was I like, think. I don't know that that's exactly what I No, said. Andrew, I'm sorry. You can clip it up. But I'll Catherine play the quote it. now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jesse Cave, how are you? I'm okay. Yeah, I'm not great. <laughs> I'm here to Such bring the negativity. Yeah. No, that's not, that's not negative. Can anyone do great in this heat? No one can do. I'm, I, I really struggle. I do struggle with my outfits. It's just my outfits. I don't mind the heat so much. I just, I, I can't bear to wear anything other than 100 denier black tights. So. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes, me too. Why can't I cover my legs at all times? And also, I'm incapable of finding something to wear or having complex thought. The only thought I have at the moment is, it's so warm, I'm mm. warm all the time. Are you sweating? I'm mm. sweating. I just want a change of clothes every five minutes. Mm. I've had two showers already today. Whoa. Two. Right. But you are in a different situation to both of us because you've got longer hair. Oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Do yeah. you my... ever just think, shave it for the beginning of summer? All the time, but Damn. my have such a terribly, like I have one side, like I have one big ear. I would not see a shaved head. Oh, is it minion? Is it bad? No, I just have what I'm not symmetrical enough to have a shaved head. And also, I just don't have the time to even shave my head. So, like, uh, the re my hair is honestly past my vagina. That is what a great it's metric. Epic. What a it's, great you metric. Know, the Morris set yes. thing. Yeah. Yeah, it, that, I'm worse than that. That's so amazing. It's down to like there. And it's only because I don't have time. Isn't it so funny how we all measure our hair? I always measure my hair based on nipples. Mm -hmm. I'm like, as long as it's beyond my nipples, I'm fine. I always want to be able to do ta-da. Yeah. If I can't do ta-da, what's the point? Mm -hmm. And I cut it above them recently, and I was like, well, what? There's no show here. Yeah, There's yeah, like, yeah. I will never do it again. I always want a curtain reveal. Also, yeah. that means your hair's going to get longer as you get older. Surely, the yeah. more your it does nipples go down, it does the more you're right. chasing it like <laughs> some sort of mad witch. You're dead right. Because already my nipples are a lot further down than yours because they're big, so the gravity thing. Yeah, sure. So sure. like, I'd have to be so far down to cover it. And then the dark, my hair's not thick enough. Yeah. Like, because I've got like, you need like hair they're hair there. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. no baby's getting their mouth around that. Like, it's <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Girls. Do you not have time because you have four kids? Well, the last time I got my hair cut was in 2008. 18. What? Like How are you healthy? No, at a hairdresser. Oh, and the okay. reason, I, I've, I've had terrible trauma experiences at hairdressers I don't have time to get into. But no, I, no, no, no. Hey, look, I want you to feel safe here, <laughs> to speak your truth. I think I want to pick, like, I, want, I, I, I don't feel like I should go into my hair trauma story this early on, but I will pick say. Pick your traumas, babe. Pick your traumas. You know when you see yourself in a photo and you're like, who is that? That's yes. not me. Yes. yes. Um, I went into a hairdresser thinking, oh, I just have, for a change, I'll have, I have I have some layers. Mm -hmm. I have some long layers, yeah. and I'll have um, I have some highlight low lights. And I'm still not brave enough to get my hair dyed. So I, whenever I get any highlights, I do them like under the parting. So yeah. you basically shouldn't even. There's no point in you having them. Yeah. But yeah. he took a photo. He was. He, it was at the beginning of people starting to like be very brazen with their social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he set up a tripod behind me, and I was like, oh, okay, fine. And the tri <laughs> the the image, mm -mm. the image, the before image, and he put it on Instagram. Didn't ask my permission. No, <laughs> tagged, tagged me because we inevitably got into a conversation about Harry Potter and I said I had to be like, well, I was in it. So he found me on Instagram. Yeah. No. He tagged me. Yeah. And the before image <laughs> is like the character in Adam's family. You know, the like just the, yeah. what is it? Cousin, Cousin it? it. That's <laughs> amazing. So That's amazing. <laughs> Awful. It's so just a hairy bush. That's all it is. Yeah. <laughs> just the thing, and it made me just so upset seeing this image no. that I just don't. I've never been able to go back in. Babe. And you know when you say something to a hairdresser like, "Listen, I don't want to be offensive, but I need to do my own. I need to brush my own hair after you wash it because it's really knotty and it takes a long time." And it's like, "No, no, I, I'll do it. No. I'll do it." And they kill you 
yeah. brushing it. So every time I've gone in, I've just offended a hairdresser, <laughs> been offended by them. You know Helen won't get her nails done with me anymore because I want I to can't. Be- I'm sorry. I can't. I just, they're doing their job. I can't comment oh, on it. I, I can't. Catherine takes say? the file out of their hands All and goes, I, I have to double check. Can I do my and own shaving? It's so awkward. No, I'm dying. I hate it so much. I'm sorry. Nobody can file my nails in the right shape. I know that because you sat at mine yesterday and did them for 20 minutes. But that's why I say, hey, is it cool if I file them? I'm not asking them to. Do- that's so assertive. That's amazing. But I'm not asking them to like She's have to correct their work. I'm asking to do a little bit of the work for them. No. Can I file them? Because one, I'm sorry, you're not preening your dick when you're a manicurist like I am, right? <laughs> First of all. <laughs> Second of all, you don't have OCD. Thirdly, all I'm saying is, is it cool if I just shape them so that we don't have to do the thing where they do it, it's wrong. Then I have to take so much length off of fixing it. Yes. I completely am on board with that. Thank you, but I Helen think you guys are psychotic she bitches wants it next yeah. who <laughs> refuse to allow anyone what to just do their own thing. What star Leo? Okay, a Leo. And my moon is in Leo. No, I'm a Taurus, so I I would do that. I would. No, do it's that. contested at the moment that Hitler was a Taurus and not an Aries. It's the whole thing. <laughs> well, yeah. I think I'm more Aries. I'm an Aries. Really? I yeah. Know. I just. Oh, can we just talk about star signs? The yeah. entire time. Oh God, <laughs> like, I was having you, such a nice time. In general, oh. okay, I've got lucky with hairdressers at the moment. I've got okay. the nicest girl, and we're just sort of like just whatever you want, and she makes because I don't really know anything, but I definitely got too ambitious when I was younger, <laughs> and you know when it's like. I went through that thing of like any American on TV. I was like, that's who I want to be. Yeah, we Because they all had the best bedrooms, like the parent trap bedrooms. Mm. It was insane, right? And I genuinely thought that Mary Kate and Ashley and me were triplets and <laughs> I'd gone missing. I, was I just... read the books of their TV yeah, show. Yeah, obviously. What? Because they were so good. What? Oh my god, the um their film catalogue is first of all phenomenal. Thank you. Mm. Um, you weren't in it. Triplets. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Secondly, the one where they come to London to do the the model UN competition, yes. I think changed my life. I was like, <laughs> oh, this is who I am now. I can't believe I haven't seen that. Given that I was, I am, su- I wanted to be Mary Kate Olsen. We all wanted to be Mary Kate. Yeah, Poor and didn't want to be Ashley. Poor didn't want to be Ashley. I'm sorry, as a triplet to them. I felt like I was in the middle of the two of them. The really? bridge, the bridge the began. Bridge. Yeah. Do you think they're jealous of Elizabeth? <gasps> Who they wouldn't be? be. No. She's younger, she's fresher, and she's more like respected <gasps> artistically. <gasps> without Patriarchy the alert. trauma, without the trauma of being a child star. Exactly. A hundred percent. I think that they purposely and actively chose to step out of the limelight and are very much following their truth with fashion. And also their and older are amazing. Men. And oh, passion of older men oh, and old fashion. Old men. Go out with like the president of Nicholas Sarkozy. Yeah. His brother. Right? His brother. Yeah. Fair play. They're political. Yeah. And, they, and, and then they, they got divorced. Well. And then they got divorced. They served plates of cigarettes at their wedding. Oh my God. So good. No, Helen. I'm sorry. I know I shouldn't promote it, but like, yes, please. Could you imagine just a plate of Vogue's coming around? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we... I want to tell you about my haircut oh, I got. Oh, yeah. Sorry. And I then got, I... Okay. Um, so this is like. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the dynamic. Um, when you're speaking, Helen's just waiting to talk. She, yeah. She's not actually listening. I have just a lot like... of fun things to say. <laughs> okay, go, go, okay. go. So this yeah, is the full like hairdressers. And you know, when you just get your like haircut in like your mum's friend's garage and yes. she'd have a mirror up and she'd be like, it's my salon. It's like, all right, Christine, you fucking mad bitch. So we went there. Lost you there, but yeah, I God, yeah. In, Okay, well, close enough. Yeah, we all get the vibe. And um, I took in a magazine that had Mary Kate and Ashley in it when they had that do where it was like little flicky bits, <gasps> just like all the no, way down. the feathering. I have naturally curly hair, but I was like, this is 100% what I'm supposed no. to look like. I will upload a picture on our Instagram when this comes out and you will be disgusted. But it is like a block with like one big flick like this. And I'm like... <laughs> That's bad. And the worst thing is I didn't know it was bad because I thought it was so fit. I was like, I'm the coolest eight-year-old out there. That's Everyone's going to like fucking get confused. That's sweet. You were probably at this stage where your oh kids are getting their hair cut. Yeah, that makes me so happy though to think of you being like boldly happy with that haircut. That's yeah. so lovely that you hadn't got ruined yet. No, I was yeah. like, I am, I, everyone's going to be like freaking out at school tomorrow. Oh my gosh, that's so like, nice. That's oh really my God, sweet. here she did comes. Did you ever lose the, the confidence? Did you ever um, lose it? My friends, like people are trying to take it out of me by still misconstruing stuff oh, all the time. Oh, that's so great. Did she ever <laughs> lose the confidence? Jessie, have you met Helen? <laughs> no, <laughs> she's fine. <laughs> no, but I was like, that's so great. Yeah, because like, well, I found out a couple of years ago I was bullied at school. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'd missed it. I'd missed it entirely. <laughs> Who told you? My school friends. They were like, no, 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 you were definitely bullied. And I was like, oh, okay. I think I was just a bit too thick to notice. I was like, mm, She was oh like, I guess God. we're having banter. Yeah, I thought it was all banter. How like, fuck yourself, fat Helen. <laughs> That's incredible. Come to my party. <laughs> my kids, no, I, I'm so waiting for them to, I, I, every day after school, I'm like, what, what, what trauma will they have had today? 
I what trauma know. will they have? Is that because you had a traumatic time at just school? Ter- just all terror, like just, you know, I I don't think I for one day ever liked school. No. Um, no. Yeah, awful. But some kids, but I think that's, I'm, I now accept that that's just, that's probably quite a majority of well, people. Were you a loser? Yeah. I was a Helen! Well, no. well, you have to ask! You no, have to you ask! Have to she ask. might have been a you fucking have to ask. Dweeb. Do you think I was a loser? No, I think you went through an emo phase and I think you hit it up too hard. No, I honestly. never went full emo. Okay. <laughs> no, I never went full emo. I would have liked to have had, like, I would have liked to have gone further into being one yeah. type of thing. Oh, no. were you like a new hair scrunchie was, every six months, no, new personality? No, no, no. I just was, an, I did a lot of sport. So I did swimming and That's tennis cool. up until I was like, like two, I had missed out on the on the early friendship bits. Aww. So it meant that when I then finally stopped sport, when I was like year nine, yeah. I was already, I was so innocent. So oh, I'd missed bless. out. So like, then I ramped it up to try and catch up. Yeah. And had a terribly, like terrible time. Um, Wait, when you ramped it up, I ramped like, what, like, what's what? Like, so I've got an idea in my head. <laughs> and I, I'm hoping I've got it wrong. So you, you're just year like, nine, you know, so you're age 13. Just you're like, like I better catch up. Well, you know, you just, you just choose. So I, I was quite adaptable. So I could have chosen the losers. Okay, yeah. Or yeah, I yeah. could have chosen the cool girls. Okay. I chose the cool girls. Should have chosen the losers. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah we were way more fun. I should have we chosen the losers. We were a much kinder group. I yeah. still have those friends today. Yeah. But I chose the cool girls and they all hate me and I I hate them. And if I see them in the street, it's just, I get flashbacks of, you know, but don't you think you have to have a bad time in school in order to be a good creative? I do. I do I, think I it just forms you. Yeah, I think all, I do believe like all experiences just make you, all, all bad experiences you can funnel into something. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, and that that is definitely my therapy. Um, so I yeah, when I meet people who had a good time at school. Thank you. <laughs> When I'm even very good at school, but you're. But the thing is, I thrived. You, I really thrived. thrived. Yeah. yeah so did well, you love all school, even like. Si- I mean, like a- academic-wise, no, I stopped attending. Oh right, okay. But I w- <laughs> academically, I was not very good. Right. Like I wasn't passing any exams, not doing very well. But I loved like. This you, is where I'm going. This is who I walk to school with. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'd go around Emma Black's house she every morning. She loves being busy. She just loves keeping busy. I'd hang busy. out with Sue and Adrian Black, and then me and Emma Black would walk to school, stop off, get some friends on the way, Nish Jib and Putra, the whole gang. We'd go to school. We had two 20 minute breaks, end of school, and then we'd just like what go. What you home. liked was a schedule. Yeah, or just the hang. So you yeah. didn't worry about your future? Um, I did when I was 14, I had a crisis and I decided it's all right, I'll be a speech and language therapist and I'll study at Reading Uni. And then my mum had to have the chat with me that to go to university, you need to pass an exam. And I failed everything. So we decided that that wasn't for me. So I worked in accessories in Oxford Street instead. She used to wank there. Yeah. Wank there? Yeah, Yeah, she wanked there. In the bag stock room. Um, Have you talked about about this in a podcast before? You had like the wanking in accessories I've wanked. Everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry, no, there is nowhere it's you just can a safe find. Guess. We're just off Oxford Street right now. I've wanked in about five locations within like a mile. What radius. year did you work in accessories then? Two thousand nine. In two thousand nine, I was working Urban Outfitters in Oxford Street. Shut what? The fuck up. Oh my How god! That actually that? is your divide, by the way. That I was working at Nature's Way, which was the Irish version of Holland and Barrett. <laughs> <laughs> You must know about so many vitamins. I really do. I really do. You're incredible. I know. We're all completely on brand Urban Outfit is really good. Yeah, that's, that's so cool. you. Yeah, that's too, so you. It was full-time retail. Yeah. And, and in by, 2009, oh my God. By yeah. the end of that, I was just like, no, no, no. I have to I have to do something else. <laughs> we have to make this creative stuff work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. liked it because I had a couple of friends there in different shops. I had my friend Rhea was in Jack Will's. It on Floral Street and I was like she's the coolest one out of all of us and then all of my accessorized huns it was great I loved it did For you get free hoops and stuff baby yeah. it was did a 74 yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally about to be like no it was a 75% discount we took everything I, everything well, I <laughs> you know Urban Outfits had the cool t-shirts yeah. yeah so when I decided I was going to quit and by this point I'd worked at the High Street Ken one and the Oxa Circus one oh my yeah. god so you I were was, like lifer yeah and I yeah. had you have a you had a discount and I thought well my brothers they love those t-shirts I love those t-shirts so I'm in a before I quit, I'll go and buy loads. Yeah. <laughs> but I had stupidly already put in my notice. And also because I'm I'm not a people pleaser, but I don't like to be a quitter or wrong. Yeah. So I thought, oh, oh I'll... Oh, you're really fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why did the cool girls at school not like you? You seem great. So I, I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll make the 
that no, I that I can see why it didn't work out. Like I was both bullied to school it's like I'm a queer and I have to be right. Like, yeah, and I'm not a fucking people pleaser. Oh, like here me. comes a girl that's ignored us for three years playing tennis and now refuses to quit. Like I might cry, so be careful. <laughs> okay. um, oh, no, 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 I'm joking. No, 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 what oh do we God. do when somebody else cries? Let you them cry. cry and oh, let them, them cry and listen. Oh, that's so nice. Has people, have people cried on the podcast? Um, not on air. We, cut okay. we can edit. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I wrote a letter being like, the reason I am having to stop working at Urban Outputters is because I feel like whoever the woman was, like Karen or whatever, um, has been extremely rude to me. <laughs> and Had um, you been? She had been, like, <laughs> slightly bitchy. <laughs> Do you know what? This was before everything was like very like you know. Now I'd be able to absolutely get like you know like I I feel like really like upset with how she spoke to me, and it would be like like for my mental health. Like I I don't feel like that is it's not yeah, a healthy yeah, yeah. relationship. Yeah. Back then it was like I couldn't have written about my mental no, health. No, 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 yeah, no, no, no one would give a shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They'd be like, wow, like, yikes! Thank so God I've, she's gone. I played the mental. I I played that before. Yeah. I well, could have respect, and I got out. And but then. As I go to buy the t-shirts, yeah, and I I had like fifteen. I'm one of five. I had like a lot of t-shirts. Yeah, um, I got stopped at the gates, <gasps> like at the barriers, and they were like, "Hand in your pass now, and you're not buying these t-shirts." It was what? so humiliating. And now, whenever I walk past, oh, so I'd gone to the Comic Garden one because I thought that's the only one I haven't worked smart, in. Smart, smart, yeah, yeah. Um, Wait, but they, they had called ahead when they 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 <gasps> scanned my pass. They they called when I when I handed in my um, like employee thing to get the discount, they, they realized there was something wrong with it. So they called <gasps> the, the branch to find out why this Scrungy. was making it. And then they walked to the door ahead of me. Uh, it, was, it was so That is awful. so humiliating. That's I horrendous. hate that. It was... I find it embarrassing when my bag just beeps yeah. and I know I've got yeah, nothing in there. Yeah, everyone does. And I'm like, everyone oh my does. God, I'm just like, this is so bad. Oh my God, that's so cheap yeah, of them. I know. Wow, wow. So they're very, you know, they're tight with their t-shirts. Little do they know that you could have been promoting their brand for them now. Exactly. Well, more Holy fool them. Shit. More fool them. What did you get for discount in like, the vitamins? Did shop? you get nut spray? Yeah. yeah, well, I got lots of those. <laughs> my favorite. Did you get nuts? Well, because one of my favorite snacks is Still, they're yogurt covered almonds. Oh my god, no, I can't That's even eat nice. them. They're too good. They're unbelievable. They taste like Kinder Buenos, so I can't have them because I, yeah, I'll too eat many. them all back. Have yeah. you ever done the smoked almond when it tastes like bacon? So and you're like, How good. Is this a nut? It's so, Mad. so good. Honestly, they do some of the greatest snacks oh, in yeah. there. Really, Banan- really Banan- good. Yeah, y- Yogurt covered anything. Yeah, I agree. But anyway, I was there for a while, and then I was also I also worked in Karen Millen, mm. where you had to buy Karen Millen outfits for your uniforms right. so good and let me say this at 10 a.m on a wednesday morning <laughs> a 19 year old girl in what let's face it is a you know a brand designed for women <laughs> either going to um parties or work yeah. is a bizarre <laughs> brand to be wearing yeah. i had so many like incredibly tight booby dresses <laughs> for like black tie events <laughs> that oh, I would wear on like right. Tuesday mornings being like going into Tesco for my lunch first <laughs> and then being like hey girls and also you had to buy these brands even though like they're not designed for women with no tits like Karen Millen is a brilliant brand if you have boobs but really they've bad actually got a none. wonderful curve collection they really do oh, fair play to them they actually do it's surprising but, but yeah. it is like it's for a different kind I was such a tiny titted tiny girl um, so what was the where did that bras start Oh, they don't have bras, but my my. Oh, oh you mean their oh, then their the, dresses. Oh, the dresses, but every, all right. the dresses, all the waistcoats. Oh, so yeah, Mary really Joseph. hellish. So I would just be like, it was. I was not a good advertisement for the brand, and I um, I didn't enjoy the job. But you did have to pay for your uniform, so I own a lot of Karen Millen waistcoats. <laughs> I think it's. I think everyone should work in retail for a bit. Oh God, yeah, it's good yeah, for your spirit for sure. yeah. and all like all hospitality. I think they're mm. interchangeable. Like yeah. it's the same yeah. vibe. Isn't I it? need to just see ha- what goes on behind the scenes, like with ketchup and mayonnaise and stuff. Oh, you will never have the like amount of people who shit in dressing rooms. <laughs> Did you? It's crazy. Well, actually, we didn't have dressing rooms that accessorized. They would we, just put earrings in. What? Like, don't do well, that. I just suddenly thought we were talking about. What do you mean? I, Shit in dressing rooms. People will go into the dressing room and do a poo. Karen Miller. Yes. <laughs> no. Yes. We're just like on they the will floor. take Where a dump. Where was this Karen Millen? In Dublin, in BT Two, in Blanchestown, people would just take a shit. Also, on the floor. yeah. Also, there was it was that time it was no like, on the hook. She <laughs> 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 wanted to be. Just like you said on the floor, that was the worst option. Like down the curtain. No, I just like, think like 
There's no toilet there. It's just no, there isn't oh, sorry, a toilet. Oh, sorry, no, no, no. no. It's not <laughs> a toilet, Jesse. Yeah, that's my point. Just like, the crazy thing about it is, it's not a toilet. It's a dressing room. <laughs> I cannot believe that. Yeah. Oh, my God, it was foul. Also, I like... I thinking about poo on a hook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just hang that up there. That has to be a um, solid poo. <laughs> it was really, really, really bad. And also, it was the height of, like... It felt like the height of... Um, of what's the word I'm looking for when you thieve in a shop um, shoplifting thank you shoplifting oh, oh my god she's not smart <laughs> um, of shoplifting but in that era where like I don't think people had figured out the wonders of tinfoil yet so they had just got people we just had just started coming in with giant bags lined with tinfoil wait 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 what's the tinfoil what? thing what? okay so when you line your bag with tinfoil if they have those security oh, things yes. it stops them beeping Stop it. So there would be women, you would watch on the camera, and it was like a fancy shop. So like rich looking women with giant handbags would come in and they'd be putting out those um seven or like those true religion jeans, you know, the ones that were like yeah. really expensive. They put out a stack of true religion jeans and you just see a woman on the camera just open her bag, put the entire stack <laughs> of true religion jeans in and walk out again. And on the one hand, it was like, that's atrocious. But on the other hand, because I'd never seen it before, I was like, they're geniuses. Yeah, this yeah. is insane. They can do anything. Is, women can really have it all. So yeah, a wild time working at BGG. What did you call um, if you thought there was a thief in the shop? What was your code word for it? My code word was I get paid seven pence an hour. I'm not looking at or even dealing with that. What are you talking about code words? We had Charlie. Oh my God. Charlie. So like all the different like parts of accessorized. They'd be like, all the rangers have like a different names, like Jasmine, Snowflake or whatever. And then they'd like move around and you'd be like, Charlie's and Jasmine. So we'd know exactly where it was. And Charlie, there was no Charlie at our workplace, but Charlie was the name if you oh, thought so someone cool. was dealing. I don't any of that. No, so I remember they used to try to train us in like dealing with, like stopping people from leaving the shop. Yeah. And I, I, I remember even at 19 having enough wherewithal to be like, we get paid so little to work here. <laughs> I am absolutely not wrestling some woman to the ground. Your guys' yeah. ability to stand for your, up for yourself. I know. At that young no, age I, is brilliant. I think I would have thought the same. I would have been like, no, that's not what I'm doing. That's not my job. Yeah. Are, are you a people world? pleaser then, do you think? Because that's a part of people pleasing. Maybe. If, if, if I can offer a suggestion, I, d I don't think it's a people pleasing thing. I think you thought you were a spy. <laughs> I think you had delusions of grandeur. That's true. I'd left Mary Kate and Ashley. I was actually one of the spy kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just oh, absolutely. But I was also not. very good friends with Norman, the security guard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Mossam Achaha, Hannah. Hey. He what? taught me how to We had a wonderful oh, time together. That's so sweet. That's and his twin brother worked in the monsoon across the road. Aww. Well, you're just like, I think it's a very different. Like, I'm just not like a social, I'm not a social butterfly. You seem like a, you know, that you, you, you excelled in that kind of community aspect of working in a shop and like having the friends and different. Whereas I was just like, I would go in stand behind the tills, stay there for eight hours, <laughs> not talk to anyone, yeah. and then go home. Oh yeah, I try and get them to teach me all their different languages. That's amazing, I wish I was like that. Whereas I only made friends with the girls at the Mac counter because they would do my face whenever I wanted to go out, and it was <laughs> honestly unbelievable. A big fake tanning phase for me, so getting somebody to match that foundation-wise was a phenomenal thing. Yeah. I've got a question. Really? I have a question too. Both, oh wait, is yours really good? Because mine's just average, I think. I think I, re well, okay. I just wanted to know, because when Jessie came in, she said she she had thought, she felt like she knew you mm. from yeah. Instagram. Mm. Can we tell some of that story? Are yeah. we allowed? We yeah. can cut it out if yeah. not. Yeah, well, but I, I already followed you on Instagram ages ago. Yeah, I've been a fan of the doodles for years. Oh, yeah, nice. me too, to be fair. I'm OG. I'm OG. Yeah. I'm an OG Jessie Cave. I was before Sunrise, John. That's me? so nice because yeah. I've gone like um, back to doodling. I, I know, lost, it's so exciting. I lost exciting. part of myself. I just lost part of myself. And I was like, I, I mean, I don't know. We could talk for ages about Instagram in general, but like I found the last year online so hard. Until you found me. Until I found you. <laughs> and Jessie Cave, how did you find Helen Bauer? I found you. <laughs> this is my favorite story. Because you were on a trip. Yes. With, let's just say, somebody I know. Yeah. yeah. And I was interested in their activity. Yeah. <laughs> And so I thought, well, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, they aren't that prolific online. Yeah. But so you, you followed me to see if you could ever, then you fell in love with me. And I was like, I'm going to stay. Oh, I'm going to stay. Wow. I, I was going to do, I, I find it, don't you find it slightly eerie when someone doesn't follow you? but they look at your stories. But who checks who's watched their stories? Oh, like, come on. Are you joking? I, no are one you checks. joking? It takes so long. Like every now and again, there's like one person I want to see a story. I give up halfway through. I'm like, it's not worth are it. Are you I mean, wild? I do the first bit, but I don't like some, in my, in some neurotic days, sometimes maybe I have gone through thousands of people who've looked at yeah, my stories. Yeah, me too. Maybe I was just, oh, 
Oh, oh my god. Oh. That, we'll just put that back. Yeah, just pop there. it there. Just pop one it there. one thing I do feel like they need to if they're gonna start doing little add-ons like playing a song for the moment bit or you know, like all of the little flourishes they think they're adding that are gonna improve our lives. One thing that would improve our is lives is typing one name to see once they've yeah. searching your stories. Oh, who, is, wow. who has seen yes. your stories? How much does this person look but the thing is right. Can I not to be the devil's advocate, but that is my job because I'm just one of those gals. <laughs> if some, if you have that power, they then have that power yes. as well. I know, and that's what the thing. And is, I, I click on people's stories very fast. And I genuinely like to think, oh, you just fly through them. Yeah. So does that mean it doesn't come up? I just, I just click through things. I'm not even watching them necessarily, but I'm just like clicking through. Oh no, just, like, Helen's like she's out. watching, but it means nothing to her. Basically, yeah. is what you're saying. Whereas I, oh, I thought you were doing that so that you, 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 you don't get seen. We have the same mind, Jesse. So in my head, how I think it works is... I'm not actually really here! How, I'm not really here! Well, how I do it is I'll unblock somebody, like, say, like, a person that I used to know, and then watch their stories and then block them again and hope that they don't know that I watch. Is that true? Oh, my God, that's amazing. Does that mean that they that's won't see amazing. that I watch? I'm just going to say, I think most people I hope who aren't so. in this Leo, <laughs> Leo mad mindset... I don't think everyone is like checking it that intensely. I don't, I don't. I think I that think you're they are the checking. anomaly here. Yeah, I think they are I checking. would ask you to lower your arm <laughs> and calm I'm down. So, I'm so, this is such a tense topic. <laughs> no, okay, because we, okay. like, I we, feel like we're all screaming right now and everyone just needs to calm down Okay, well for a here's second. how I like to think of it. I like to think that yes, sure, I check who's watched my stories. Yes, sure, I watch my ex's stories and hope they haven't checked it. And I just like to believe that they do, do, do do it differently to how I do it, and that, that's fine. Oh my God, it's just yes, so I dip in with people all the time. Sorry, but I mean people them. I used to know. Like I don't think they're checking if they if you've seen it or not. Okay. And also, I think they when are. someone sometimes is significant to you, you're not significant. To them, right? <gasps> oh, no, you wash your mouth. Oh, what are you God. saying? What are you saying? <laughs> sometimes. You think I that would ask you to lower you. your tone. Okay, I would ask all of us to calm down. Because I'll say this, for feminism, this is not a good chat. I know, okay? I know. Jenny, but look but I, I'm not here for the, fa- I, like, I, I, I mean, I'm not on this podcast. I, I, I am the worst feminist known to man. No, I agree. No, Women don't deserve equal pay. Which we have a daughter, yeah, that's true. That's yeah, true. Yeah. But what I find really hurtful is when I realise that my <laughs> boyfriend looks at people's stories. And I'm like, because I see sometimes... Oh, this, is, this is gonna get so bad Jesse. look but at I, me ignore her look at me okay I see we sometimes are, everything you've said to me makes total sense okay good so I see we're sometimes we're just normal women trying to get through the world thank you Psychopathic see that he's looked at people's stories and I'm like hang on a second why are you looking at their stories why do you still follow them yes and he's like what it doesn't matter does it yeah very much the Helen approach yeah like, it doesn't matter it's nothing I'm, it's just, not I'm, just, I'm just looking and I'm yeah. like to them that is you saying that you love them still. Yeah. And you yeah, need yeah, to yeah. stop. Yeah. Yeah. So you think that everyone that watches your story is, yeah, is making a statement that they are in love with yes. you. Yeah. If, yes. you, if, you, if they've loved you before, surely. Yes. If surely. they've loved you before, they're, th- that, then that's I'm looking okay. at your story. Here's yeah. an example. Yesterday, it's a missive to my you. housemate, when yeah. you were right. I get it. It's Kath- a rose. It's, a, it's a rose. My house a beautiful yesterday. rose. My housemate took a picture of him drinking protein with Catherine in the background and he uploaded that and then you shared it. So you think that everyone that watches your story of the protein bottle and you in the background is saying, I'm (laughs) in love with you. No, but all of her exes. But any of my exes would have been, yeah. And also, Sunil and I in that process were flirting. You're fucking mental bitches. And I'm telling you now, you better hope a witch hunt doesn't come back because I'm accusing both of you (laughs) first. There is no way you aren't going straight on the stage. We would drown so I wouldn't even whisk a drowning with you. I want to see you burn. (laughs) I want to see the full thing Yeah, Jessie's too athletic. This is insane. (laughs) The worst thing is, I know it's insane. And I know it's such a colossal waste of the very little bit of time that I have, but I just can't stop. And it means so Think much of the to me. You and that have. is how it's <laughs> ultimately. And that's how her hair is past her vagina. And that's why I look so strange. But that is also why I follow. <laughs> that's why I follow you. I wouldn't have followed you if I hadn't hey, been look in, at a, that. in a neurotic phase. So you're in love with me? Well, you know, I did. It was definitely like, you know, I, I, I decided. Not, I obviously I knew of you before, but like I was like, I'm just gonna suss her out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stalk her a little bit on stories before I make the, the bold the commitment. follow. Yeah. You know. Harnessing. Uh, Andrew, do we have a listener problem that isn't about how they filmed The Little Mermaid? That would be awesome. That's, that's our entire inbox. In the no. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait. Before we do the problem, Jesse Cave. Sorry, um, Jesse Cave. How good an advice giver are you? I think I'm. I think I'm 
I would say I'm quite good. Yeah. Um, I'm. I think in another life I would have really liked to be a like a pep talk manager type role. Like a life coach? Yeah, like I love, uh, I, I, I love, manager. Like I, I love seeing people's lives and be like, right, this is what you gotta do. This is what you gotta do. I'm quite good at that. Oh my God, I, you're I the same person. Yeah, we I can't can. take advice, but we can give it. We do not want to hear your input on us. We don't want to self-analyze. We won't be changing our behavior, but my goodness me, can we tell you how to run your lives? Absolutely. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. That is me too. I get it. Holy I get it. shit. Um, okay, well then let's solve this Good problem. Good luck to this sweet listener that's written in. <laughs> <laughs> You're about to have some very rigid advice that I would <laughs> ask It's very follow. simple. The world is black and white. There's an obvious solution here. You're either a good person or a bad person. And let's it's about hear. working hard. Yeah. <laughs> Ready, Andrew? This is a career advice uh, Oh, good. Problem. From uh, who? From G. Hi, Hi G. G. Hi, G. Uh, and it says, hey, Hoggies, love the potty. Thank you. No, Thank I hate you. that. Great rhyme. I love it. Hey, Hoggies, love I the potty. I hated it. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> Hope you can maybe offer some advice. I'm in my latest 20s and feel trapped in the career path that I'm in. Here we go. It's nursing or something shit like that. I don't. <laughs> you never know. I don't mind my job, brackets office job, uh, but it's not the long-term career path I'd like, and I feel like I fell into this path. I'm grateful to be in full-time work where I feel comfortable, but I've always dreamt of having a creative career. career. However, I'm one, unsure which path to take, which is leading me to make no decisions. Uh, I, last year, I finished an MA in graphic design, uh, but I haven't done anything with it. Uh, and two, I don't know how to get into a creative career path with my office job history and feel like I'm on the outside looking in. Any perspective from you, lovely lot, uh, would be much appreciated. Uh, how did you build your creative careers uh, and did you have previous jobs in different industries? Thank you so much, G. Okay, wonderful. Off you go, Helen Barry. It seems like you want to start. Just Number I'm guessing one, that from your. I just want G to just check in with themselves and just like look at your primal astrology because it does have a section where it says careers you'd be best suited for. And I think we learned a lot from your hedgehog and like what you should be doing. Mm-hmm. I think if it says office work is the best thing for you, then just give up on your dreams and just focus on that. Helen, it no. science. <laughs> it's science. And I think just just have a look at it and just take a little bit of time to do some soul searching with that. Um, and also. We yeah, it's easy to get into the creatives. All you need to do is work in a shop for a bit, apparently, according um, to our chat. Okay, that was terrible advice. <laughs> Jesse Cave, let's go through the question. Okay. First of all, um, have you ever worked in other industries? Yes, I guess so. I, I I'm I'm I don't have um. I mean, like they've got more than me. I don't have a degree. Yeah, I don't have a degree yeah, yeah. in anything. Preach. So if you've got a degree in graphic design, do something with it. Yeah. So what is your advice for getting into it? To get into it, well, I mean, I think all creative industries are in the same position where social media has transformed the way it works. Yeah. So if you have a good social media and you are getting some traction on that, that's kind of all you need these days, which is depressing in one sense, but for for this kind of situation, it's perfect. Like, you can make a career out of putting your stuff out there on social media. Yeah. Very true. You can at least account for like a CV gap if you want to be like, if you can put loads of stuff on there that proves that you can do what you say you want to do, mm. I think is amazing. Also, it seems to me like if you had time to do an MA, even if you don't want to quit your job immediately, you'll have now, having finished the MA, have this time that you were using for that. Yeah. Mm. If you use, if you just say that is the exact amount of time I'm going to use to work on my Instagram or work on my, on applying for jobs or work on doing my own stuff then I think that that's already a window you should capitalize on if you've already built that into your life um yeah I think but also and I'm gonna say it I think the thing that changed for me with comedy making it work and not it was like when I cut down my hours at the job that was paying my way yeah and then suddenly and look it's a risk obviously but there was a part of me that went well now I fucking have to make this work because Mama's got to pay her rent. So yeah. I think you have to be brave. I also would say like with graphic design, there's a lot of corporate jobs in that. Like there, it's not like, it's not saying like if you were like, I want to be an actor, I'd be like, don't quit your job quite yet. But there are jobs <laughs> that pay in, in graphic yeah. design yeah. that you could definitely do. Um, 
I I also just think like I think people like I'm, I'm so tricky because we're not in this world. But I think people do admire honesty. If you like, you've got your MA in graphic design. If you're going to these meetings and you're worried that your CV is all like this, like one office job that they're going to be like, what? Like people are like, no, but this is what I really wanted to do. This is why I did my masters. Like why else I had a job? People will be like, oh, that's amazing. That's impressive. And like I didn't think about social media, but that's such a good point. Like if you want to like get that presence going so people can see your work like i think google ability is just such an important thing in anything in the creative arts and look at other graphic designers on instagram and see which of their pages are working and why are they working mm-hmm. i think that's a good thing to do and what jobs are they doing that you would want to be doing and maybe message somebody who's doing well and ask if they need like someone to assist yeah well, i would also say just to you know be the negative voice in this um oh like, hold on here we go if, if, <laughs> <laughs> like, this is gonna be great if you're happy with what you're doing yeah. in life. Yeah. And you've enjoyed doing an MA in graphic design and, and you would like a creative job, but you're actually quite happy with what your set of circumstances is. Like what what are we all searching for? Like if you've got if you're if you've got enough Nothing apart from the two of you are searching for <laughs> world domination, like some sort of evil overlord genius. Jesse, were you about to be like, if you're happy with your lot, stay with it when the two of us are like, nothing is ever enough. We gotta keep moving, you gotta keep moving. I haven't won a championship because exactly. I haven't won a championship. No, but that's exactly <laughs> that, that like I, I, I can see other people's situations be like, they got it right. They got the, the quality of life thing. Yeah. Like they're they're focusing on what makes them happy rather than what they should be creating or doing like being a creative is like so exhausting and like I was sometimes I yearn to like have a normal job and to have a salary and to have like somebody like to be able to clock off what like to be able to like cheat at Mm -hmm, work mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. that like if I cheated at work I'm only cheating myself yeah (laughs) oh my god we're the same person it's only your own time you're wasting Catherine I will say to myself so it we doesn't dug. have to be that way, G. <laughs> you don't have to live a creative We're life filled with this much anxiety. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Like, save stress. yourself. Save yeah. yourself. Just do be aware that being a creative, if self-employed, is actually mainly, and I think people don't realize this, it's a mainly admin. It's yeah. mainly running a business. Yeah, that's true. A lot of it's just admin. And also, like, you, you do go, have you're to... you're going to fuck up the admin. So, like, you just copy and paste an invoice. And you're like, that'll do. But it's a different no. invoice for a different company with a different amount. And no, everybody... Like, th- can you send it as a PDF? And you're like, I've just got a new laptop. I don't know how Pages works. And they're like, <laughs> did you get Microsoft Word? And you're like, it's 100. No, I'm not going to get Word. And then you can't invoice anyone. And you just say, can I just have a bank transfer? And they went, no. Or you, or you fuck it up like me and you have like three different word accounts and you don't know where, you where the word diff- is. Can I have okay, one of those? Okay, you're, <laughs> you're both stressing me out massively. Okay. You definitely can and run the Excel. business. Excel, you need um, Excel. Never use Excel. Okay, you need you it. You can you, Google Doc, Google Sheets. You, they're free, open source. I guess can what- you say we, things like that, Andrew, but you're not there when I'm at home watching Malcolm oh. in the Middle getting confused. Oh my God, you just watched <laughs> all of Malcolm in the Middle. <laughs> Woohoo, it's so good. Which I did it's not realise is so not appropriate for an eight-year-old and a six-year-old. Yeah, no, yeah. They have sex so much. Yeah. yeah, they have a lot of sex. They have a lot of sex. Alan and Lois love each other. Couple. Yeah, they, yeah, love each they other really still love each other. Four or five kids. Also, it's so that exciting. final episode. Oh my god! When she goes like, "It's what you're supposed to do." Yeah. Like you, we, you, we, like d- look me in the eyes and tell me you can't do it. Yes. Oh my god! I, she's amazing. She's a feminist icon. She like, is. She's like unbelievable. And apparently, unbelievable. she's nice in real life. <gasps> yeah, we love. Yeah. Sorry, that's not on you know on topic, but that was no, amazing celebrity yeah. gossip. There's your celebrity gossip. Yeah, she's, she's nice in real she's life. She's nice in real <laughs> life. G, I think you need to be a graphic designer. I'm sorry, I think you should throw everything in the bin that you've done so far with your life and throw it all and just like risk it all. Whoa, that gra- is... it's just it's hit me. It's hit me. And I, I think you should design plates. And you can invoice Helen if it, if you're a failure. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I'm gonna ba- I'm gonna put money where my mouth is. You're getting fifty pounds. Jesse and I me. think you should slowly build, build, build on the time you were using to study to make sure that your business is sustain- sustainable. Yeah, it's sustainable. Keep your options open. Yeah, and then if leave you're your listening job. to this, your desk right now. Stand up and walk out. No. <laughs> <laughs> stand up right now and walk out. <laughs> but after checking your primal astrology, like get, make sure the signs. Yeah, no, you do want to check. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why am I concerned? What I will this? say for. Um, like moving from a job which is sort of like a solid income that's like coming in regularly i never did like a pet and i always like worked in cafes and bakeries and stuff but like moving from that to something else like you will be able to get a job in like a shop or a cafe again or for you in an office again like as long as you like you're nice to everyone your cv is good they can see like you will be able to find that again so like it's not I think everyone thinks that when you move on to the next thing in life that you've closed the door and you can never go back, you can go back yeah, to things. Like it's not gone. People are so afraid of um, 
you know, making a mistake and not being able to reverse yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. But uh, other than death, you kind of can reverse. I've left every door open. Like mm, I could go yeah. back to jobs now. Like it's just, it's just, it's I can't because I'm a bitch, but yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah they, neither they of they you took, can. Because they took your pass me. and you were like, fuck you, I'm an embarrass. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I cannot get referenced. Yeah, yeah, uh. I write you a reference, Jessie. I write you a nice reference. That would be so sweet. Yeah. That'd be she so means nice. well. She's very loyal when you get to know her. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Extremely. <laughs> to her own detriment. Yeah. She's a Leo she's too loyal. What's she yeah. supposed to do? Okay. <laughs> Does that help? Uh, I think so. Uh, hey, great. There was a, uh, a postscript as well that said uh, they only found the podcast one month ago and they've already caught up. Stop. Whoa. Well, can I suggest that then you maybe have got enough time to do your yeah. graphic design then? <laughs> <laughs> design us graphics. We'd love it. Yeah, well, we won't, um, we may not be able to afford to pay you if you're that successful. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. That would be so nice. That would be cool if they made us a graphic. We could be your first job. Yeah. What's your, send your us your pricing. Yeah. We'll share your socials. Your socials. Imagine if they send it in and it's all shit. <laughs> <laughs> sure. If it's shit, we'll cut this bit out for the when it goes on. Oh, no, we can't. Yeah. It goes out this. Oh, you know what? Good luck to you, Jay. You're on your we own. We wish you well. <laughs> Hey Jesse Gabe, you have a podcast. I do. Well, I have. I have. Yeah, I do have. I do have a podcast. We're, kind we're, of lost count of the podcasts I've got. <laughs> well, tell us about them so people can find them. My main podcast at the moment. I mean, I was doing one during pregnancy mm-hmm. and um, post pregnancy. I really post- respect that you're not ruling out that podcast happening again. You're like, yeah, let's yeah. see. Well, no, I, I, well, I called it whenever it kicks because it was about. It, I bold. I, I, I wanted to do a podcast previously when I was pregnant with my third, um, but I didn't want to attempt. I didn't, I was, I've, I've, I've never been one to like, until the baby's here, yeah. I don't feel like I can like really, oh, but this okay. time I was like, I'm going to be bold and I'm going to do it when I'm 20 weeks pregnant and I'm going to do it for the last 20 weeks. Whoa. And, um, it did, it was really cathartic to do because I, yeah. I, I thought, well, I might not have another baby. Like I want to chart how I'm feeling and yeah, chart. It's amazing. yeah. And it was, it was really nice. And I did that afterward, but it, there was lots of problems with it too, in terms of like, um, uh, whatever, but my the podcast that I love doing. Listen to that. that d- what, sure. what a hard sell. Yeah. Hard yeah. sell. I think it's a good ad because I'm intrigued. Yeah, me I'm too. Like, me what too. What were the problems with it? I Don't tell us. No, just because I got out. quite sad. I got quite sad because then oh. I. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just yeah. because I had um for the fu- I got sick in the last trimester. I got COVID and then I got oh. norovirus, which norovirus on the back of coronavirus when you're 33 weeks pregnant Jesus. is quite bad. Um, That's and hell. so I had to deliver quite early. And mm. so obviously I had a pause with doing the podcast. So then when I picked it back up, I think oh, I definitely, this is what my new show is about. Um, oh, yeah. it, it's, like, it's about, I, I've been very humbled by motherhood lately. And that's quite mm. hilarious given that I have four kids and I've only just, <laughs> just <Yeah>. discovered, <laughs> only just discovered that it's quite hard. Um, <laughs> So I, and that is, I think, largely down to the fact that I got, I had this kind of like, I think Mother Nature was just like, no, 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 it's not that easy. We're gonna, we're gonna make this a bit difficult for you, you fucking bitch. Yeah. Um, so. I don't think Mother Nature thinks you're a bitch. No, but I think because I, I genuinely, I said to Alfie, I was like, if we have another baby, yeah. It will be easy. We have done it. Before. We know what we're doing. Uh, like I'm gonna nail. Oh, mother- to be fair, you needed some humbling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, I'm gonna a fourth nail- baby's a breeze. I'm gonna, I'm gonna nail motherhood this okay. time. <laughs> yeah, and I could not have got it more wrong. Also, really fun for your older kids to hear. I'm gonna get it <laughs> yeah. right this time. <laughs> no, but that's my philosophy. All I, practices. <laughs> I I just believe that like. In a family of a big family, <laughs> yeah. the mother is a different mother to each child. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, like, of course. If you of know, course. Your, your siblings have mm-hmm. got of different course. relationships to your mother. And, you, mm-hmm. and I'm a different mother at, in, throughout the year. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm a different mother to my, my 18, like, my, my two year old, who I, uh, but I'll be a different mother in a few months' time. Yeah, of course. Like, you're constantly course. evolving. And that makes total sense. So, wait, so, so you they can listen to the podcast, which is um, whenever, whenever it, it kicks. kicks. Yeah, you but also then, have a podcast with BB. Yeah, so me and yes. BB have just, we stopped doing our normal podcast, which we started doing during lockdown, which was our, about our lives and our relationship. Yeah. And it was lovely, but then we ran out of things to talk about in a way because we felt quite exposed of like, course it was quite and it was also we were heavily grieving our brother and oh, it was right. very much like charting that as well so we've decided to start which has been so it's like been the most fun I've ever had because it's us 
and and this is a different league to your podcast, guys. Like it's us in a living room with a stolen backdrop, like with <laughs> well. a with a dodgy SD card, like two broken microphones. It's gone a different level, but it's us playing ourselves doing a podcast. So it's us as mad, desperate actresses. So um, good. That's phenomenal. Talking about our lives, and we we're deluded enough to think that we can give advice to other actresses out there and it's become, oh, wait, is it a parody of podcast? podcast of our podcast exactly well, it's, it's kind of it's a parody podcast of any performer's podcast incredible yes. what's it called it's called showbiz sisters phenomenal showbiz sisters I yes please really it's been so fun because and it's been so nice to do with bb because like we are like you know if we strip about we are we started out as actresses yeah and we have so many horror stories yes. from the industry and yes. it's just been so cathartic to do it under a veil. Yeah, yes. yeah, 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 Whereas yeah, when yeah. we were doing it on our normal podcast, like we, we would get like people be like, how could you talk about that? <gasps> like, how could you talk about that director? Or how could you talk about that job that you did and you hated? Or, But with this, we can like, we yes. can be bold. You need to have nicer listeners as well. Yeah, right? I agree. I'm right. like, chill you know, out, You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah, just, it was, I know it was a much more like prickly. But now it's like, oh, we can go for it. Oh yeah, my God, I'm it's so not me. in. It's so someone in. else. Yeah. And also people can see you at, at the Edinburgh Fringe. Yeah, yeah. so I'm doing, the, I'm doing the 3rd to the 13th. Fabulous. Um, and I'm going to be doing that show you know, for the rest, I'm going to, I'm hopefully going to take it on tour and do it in a big way next What's year. What's the show called? It doesn't have a title yet. That's can exciting. I name it, you can name it. Go on. The yeah. Olsen triplets. Mm. No, they've got a lot of animals in it. It's got a porcupine? lot of shadow puppetry in. You can do porcupine. <gasps> this might be the, you know. That's exciting. That might be what it is. There's a Chester Zoo called Roxy. Oh, really? Oh, that's yeah. so cute. That's <laughs> you so should cute. go there for a treat day. I did go there for a treat day. I love Chester Zoo. Did you see um, a tortoise and the radiated tortoise? Enclosure mm-hmm. called Smooth Sides. <gasps> oh no, but Helen! Please don't talk about Smooth Sides again, please. I'll no. tell you. I'll tell Is you. Let me finish. There's a it's cuddly a toy just behind story. you uh, that represents Smooth Sides. I thought you were going to say this. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> <It's laughs> she stole Alice. it from just a zoo. I, honestly, With us today. if I could have my hands on Smooth Sides, she would never leave my side. Oh, that's sweet. It's, What's um, it called? It's a really tense story that you don't need okay. to worry about. It's quite traumatic, actually. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's happening. I'll yeah. tell you in a moment. Yeah. The, the listeners have heard so much about Smooth Sides, they can't possibly want to hear it again. Just a little update. Yeah. So, My sister and dad did go recently. She is still living, and yes, she is smoother than ever. Oh, sweet God. <gasps> no! Ellen. Dear God. Okay, just keep... Oh, listen, oh. Jesse K, they can listen to your two podcasts. They can find your live show that may or may not be called Porcupine. Mm, exactly. They can find you on Instagram. Just Jesse K. They can find you on Twitter. No. Could they find you on... <laughs> no. no. Okay, fine. Could they find you on TikTok? Uh, they could, but don't bother. Listen, just go find the yeah, woman on I, Instagram. I, um, Sounds easy, yeah. Four kids, social media upkeep has become a bit difficult. Instagram it is. You Instagram. manage to do it though. And also you no, have to I like... Don't. Well, don't. you manage to watch all of those people's stories and that's Catherine, itself I impressive. I have to wrap it up. I have to talk about smooth sides. Okay, sweet. Like, oh, please. Okay, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so Goodbye. much, Jessica. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much to our executive producers, Guy Goodman, Simon Moores, Mary Fox, Annie Tonner, Sarah Harkay Deacon, Oliver Jago, and Stuart Kerr. We are so grateful. You are so generous. Thank you so much. You rock my fucking world. And here's to our amazing producers, Richard Bicknell, L. Richard Fold, Neil Redmond, Victoria Hutchinson, Emma Walton, Harold Van Dijk, Tim and Dom, David Walker, Rachel R., Anthony Conway, Sadie Cashmore, Claire Owen Jones. Jess and Nick, Zoe, Sarah, Molly, Raya Fink, Cordelia, Rachel Page, Helen A, Tina Lindsay, Graham Marsh, Amy O'Reardon, Abby Wolf, Key Webb, Matt Sims, Luke Bright, Leah, Kate Spencer, May Williams, Tristan, Liz Fort, Taz Chloe, Becky Fox, Amy, and Emily G. That hurt well, my face. Honestly, I, I'm going to go up for some more acting I stuff. I have a I headache. Think. I have a headache. Thank you so much for supporting our podcast. Thank you so much.